Hi everybody, welcome to Sim Racing Revolution. My name is John. In today's episode, we're gonna go over the Fanatic control panel and the Fanalab software. In previous videos, you've seen the unboxing, you've seen me do all the connections that are needed to connect it up to your PC or PlayStation or Xbox. So today with all that hooked up, we're gonna go into that software and see exactly how you can continue to configure your, your wheelbase and your rim. So when it comes out of the box, it's plug and play pretty much. I mean, you're good to go, uh, but you really need to install the drivers to get that control panel. Install Fanalabs, it's really great. Unlocks a lot more potential out of the wheel than what it actually comes with out of the box. Uh, and we're gonna go over that today. We're also gonna show you the on-screen display on the wheelbase and on the rim, just so you guys have a look at that. So we'll get a close-up view of that as well uh, while we're doing some other stuff. So if you're new here, Thanks for watching, thanks for coming. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content that you're seeing. If you're returning, welcome back. And uh, we'll get right to this, right after this. Cheers. There's actually nothing in here. Um, yeah, it's pretty empty, but it's a good prop, right? Yeah, okay, we'll be right back. Hey, hi everybody, and we are back. Um, you can see the screen here. You can see kind of a uh, behind me shot of the wheelbase and the rim. And um, unfortunately, it's not coming in too good on the camera. A lot of refresh <laughs> things going on in the net display. So uh, I might be able to fix that if I tinker long enough, but I just figured let's get this done. So, um, but on the Fnatic rim itself, it does come in pretty decently. So anyway, we'll get to all that in a second. Um, I wanted to turn your attention to the main screen here and let me bring up uh, Chrome. I can't even see it because my stuff is so. So what you want to do, the first thing you do when you plug your wheel in and you plug in your base and everything is download the latest drivers. So to do that, you go to Fanatec fanatic sorry dot com um it automatically took me to the u.s site because i'm in the united states and the first thing you do is right up here just click on driver that's it and you don't even have to think about what version of driver you need or anything it's kind of a unified driver so you just download click the download link and uh there it is it's just downloading now i've downloaded this a few times now so this is like download number two three something like that so anyway once it's downloaded you install it everything should go very well they do have beta drivers in the forum so you can go and grab beta drivers i did not do that i don't think there's a reason to do that so i just left that go so once you download your drivers you're good to go install those i'm not going to go through that right now but the bottom line is once you're done with that, you will have your Fnatic control panel installed. Um, so let's open that up real quick. And so let me make sure you can see the whole thing. I'm just going to move it over to the side a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, I have the podium wheelbase. DD1 is what it's detected as. Now it is the F1 version. It's designed for to be played with the PlayStation. So, uh, but basically it's a DD1. That's all you really need to know probably about it. Um, so you can see devices detected. It has the wheel base. It has the steering wheel itself and the pedals. So I have the Club Sport V3 pedals. So they are there. So now you could see when I turn the wheel, you can see all the wheelbase values change as it goes through its whole section. Now that does have a, like a, a stop there. And if you go all the way to the other side, and there's a stop on that side as well. So, um, so you can test your wheel, make sure that that's all good. The rest of this, you have a maximum steering angle is set to auto right now. Like you can set that down. Like if we want to set it down to 90, I can only go that far on each side before 
the software <laughs> is stopping me basically. So uh, if you leave it set to auto, then it's going to take whatever in-game settings that you have. So we'll just leave that there. Overall force feedback strength is set to 40. We can leave that as is. It doesn't really make it. Well, it does make a difference, but you set that as you want to. Now, the force feedback scaling. Uh, so it'll scale in two different ways. The peak is the default, allows maximum peak force due to the nature of holding and peak forces. This can cause nonlinear. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Gotta click it again. Uh, nonlinearity uh, during long sustained high holding forces. Linear reduces the overall force feedback force to a level which guarantees linear behavior between peaks and holding forces. So basically what it's saying is the linear is probably better if you want to crank your force feedback all the way up and then adjust the fine settings in game, if that makes any sense. Um, you have your damper, and when you hover over that, I'm not going to go through all these. When you hover over it, it gives you a ton of explanation, which is awesome. So if you don't know what some of these things mean, you can read up on it here. And uh, it just really is, is, is nice. It's a really nice thing. So here is setup number one that it says here. So on setup number one, so if we go to our wheel itself and go to set one, and go through the values. So sensitivity is set to auto. Force feedback should be at 40. Uh, this is at peak, not na natural dampener is at 20. So this is matching everything that's in the software right now. So I want to go over this with you just real quick because what you do in the fanatic control panel directly affects what happens with this setting. So if I go back now to the sensitivity, which is, or sen, 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 I'm not even sure what that means. Maximum steering angle is SEN. I'm not even, I, I call it sensitivity, but maybe that's what it is since. Yeah, sensitive. It says it right there. Sensitivity, maximum steering angle. So now we set it to 90. So if I click on here, oh, and it's set to 90 on here as well. So whatever you do in the software here directly affects what is sent to the wheelbase, which then affects the rim. So you can see that right there. And so we set it down to 630. Oh, sorry about that. My phone is ringing. And it's not supposed to. So anyway, um, let's keep going here. So same with all, all this stuff as well. So now if I go back to this display and I go up to setting two, you can see how it changed in the software to set up two, set up three, set up four, and set up five. So it's directly connected to the rim or to the wheelbase. So you know, what you change on one screen will affect the other and vice versa. So that's, that's what I wanted to try to get through. Um, also on this screen, you have a force feedback test. So we can do that. And that shakes the heck out of everything. And you probably heard that <laughs> through the microphone also. Um, so you have a calibrate your motor sensor. So you can calibrate that. You can erase the motor calibration and you can do a wheel center calibration right from here. Now, when you first plug in your wheel set and everything, and when you update, as soon as this comes up for you guys, it should come up to, um, a firmware update page. So we'll get to that in a second, but you'll update your firmware. Once you do that or first time set up, you're going to want to calibrate the center of your wheel. So you'll just basically put it to where center is and hit that calibration and it'll save that center of your wheel. So every time you boot it up, it'll go to center and stay there. So it's pretty cool. All right. So that's your values right here on the main screen for your wheelbase. For the steering wheel, you can do you can check out all the different things. Like we still have our steering wheel, the joystick over here. We can see that it goes through all of its functions, the clutch. So these are these two, since we do have clutch settings on here. Now you can change those with this center dial. So if we wanted to do a clutch and handbrake, we can make those do that. 
We can do it to break and throttle, so we can have it throttle and break. Um, we can also have it go to just mappable axis if we want. And you can see that changing on the wheel rim. So now it's at brake and throttle, clutch that side, handbrake on that side, clutch bite point. So the brake would be over here, throttle over here. And you can see, and that's just mappable. So you can set it to whatever you want in game. All right, so we'll set it back to clutch point. All right, so now, um, again, you can change your steering angle, vibration strength. So this is the vibration strength of the rumble motors inside of the grips. Um, so these do have rumble motors in them, and we can check that out in a second too. Uh, so the multi-position multi switch um, selects the mode of the multi-position switches of your steering wheel. So we just set it to auto, um, but you can set that to different, different types of things. And you can go through all that. Again, I'm not even sure what all that does. So. <laughs> um, so you can see, oh, also, if you see the graphic of the actual steering wheel, as you hit buttons, it'll go through and show you what is actually happening and make sure all your buttons work. So you can go like that, like that. So it's very cool. Um, now another thing, if you do an OLED test, you look right here and actually hang on. If we get out of that and now do the OLED test, you can see it's going through, giving us the Fanatic logo. And there you go. The Rev LED light test. And there you go. I didn't even realize there was a little button or a little light down here until I did the test. I didn't realize it was actually there. So pretty cool. Um, force feedback test like we did before. We're just gonna shake everything and vibrate. Wow, it vibrates the screen pretty good too. So yeah, it's a force feedback test. Now the wheel rumble test or rumble wheel test. Let me stop talking so you can hear it. So there is that. And then you can do the calibration of the wheel here too. You can also do mouse emulation. So if you touch on mouse emulation and that turns basically, where is my mouse pointer at right there? Um, so mouse emulation and I forget what I, how I did that. What's button seven? All right, so there's mouse emulation on. So if you hit button seven, it'll turn it on, which is R3 basically on here. Um, but yeah, that turns on mouse emulation. I don't know. I guess it could be handy to use somewhere. Uh, let me make sure I turn that off. All right, next up is the pedals. So I have my pedals connected. So we do have a throttle. We have our brake and this BLI here. I'll go over that in a second, but there's your brake and the clutch. So you can test those out, make sure that's good. If you have the V3 pedals or you have pedals that have rumble on them, then you can test it right there. So I'm testing the that one and the throttle. So that's pretty cool. And so BLI is a brake level indicator. So this is the amount of force that you're gonna put on the brake pedal before it kicks in the vibration. So uh, I have mine set to, I believe it's yeah 50%. So at 50%, it's gonna start vibrating. So you can set that up to 75% or higher or lower or whatever you want. And the brake force is the sensitivity of the brake pedal. Um, default value is 50%. 100% means you have to press the brake pedal harder to get the full brake input. So it's more difficult to lock up the wheels while braking. So there you go. So you can adjust that there as well. Uh, tuning menu. So here is a deep dive into all the tuning stuff. So this is basically everything you have on the OLED screens here and here, but it's in a much nicer all in one kind of configuration here. So you can go through all five setups and set them up either way you want. One thing I would like to have seen on here is if they had the setup that you'd be able to actually like 
rename them for certain games or groups of games or something like that or say i like this setting for f1 type games or f1 style cars i like this setting for gt style cars but i mean you can cheat she make some notes for yourself or something too um, but i just thought that would be nice something to have but anyway all of your settings are right there so you can set up each different uh tuning setup that you want um, firmware update so this is where you would go and update your firmware and like i said the first time you launch this it's going to detect and it will detect in future times when you do launch this if your wheelbase and or your rim or your pedals or your whatever else you have that needs firmware from Fnatic. if it's out of date it's going to let you know and allow you to go ahead and update the firmware it's a really easy process and um yeah it just works so if you open firmware update manager you get this here and so this is saying everything is up to date um, even the wireless quick release firmware i didn't even know i had a wireless quick release oh that's inside the rim or the wheel base itself it's a wireless quick release um, so that's up to date your firmware for the base dd1 and then the motor firmware so there's three different firmwares just for the wheel base itself and then my club sport wheel formula v2 which i guess this is based on is up to date and my pedals um, can only be updated when connected directly via usb so it's not going to be uh, updated unless you hook them up via usb uh, so i did that before like I don't even remember a week or so ago or something like that and it was all up to date so it's good to go so the there is a spot here for the button module endurance can be updated when connected to the wheelbase via club sport universal hub or the podium hub so stay tuned we might have to do that eventually so all right so that's everything or you can do a manual firmware update i've never tried that so i don't even know um, and you can also view the change log to see what has changed um, or you can view the full thing so kind of cool uh, we can get out of that and it's going to relaunch us right back here uh, next thing down is links so this one here is it's not real important but it's you know gets you where you need to go here's the uh, fanatic shop the forum the driver site that i took you guys to earlier fanalab which you're going to want to click on so let's go ahead and click on fanalab and that's going to take us to the website where we can download the latest Fanalab. And this is in there, basically their forums. So you go in there and download the latest version. So with that said, let's close out of this. So you'll go here, you'll go to the latest version. Uh, so it's 1.60.6 and go ahead and download that. There's the download link right there and download that latest version and then install that. And once you do, um, okay, let's finish this real quick. Uh, settings here, you can do the pedals tab, shifter tab. I don't have a shifter connected. You can collect log files. So if you ever have any issues and Fnatic says, hey, can you capture some log files for me? That's where you'll do that. Down here at the bottom, you can see we're in PC mode right now. Uh, the PC driver is there, firmwares. You can see all that, which is basically all the same information there at least it better be all the same information um, so like i said we are in pc mode right now so what does that mean that means this is set up to work on the pc obviously so to change that depending on which um, uh, wheel you have or what rim you have it might be a little bit different in my case this is sh button and the triangle button so if you hit those together now i'm in club sport version 2.5 mode if i do that again now i am in what mode is that compatibility mode so now i'm back into pc mode club sport mode here's the ps5 ps4 mode so we're not connected obviously so it's complaining compatibility mode and back to pc mode again so let's go through that again. PC mode, Club Sport V 2.5 mode, PS4, PS5 mode, compatibility mode, which I believe is another mode for the PS4 and PS5. So if it's, if you need, if it's, you're having issues, you can go into compatibility mode 
and then back to PC mode. So there are the different modes. Uh, settings we went over, so all that we went over, so let's close out of that. And now once you install Fanalab, let's open that up. And that is a lot of info. Oops, and my, I have mine going into getting minimized immediately upon uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I just want to make sure I'm not blocking any views. I don't think I am. So uh, right here, actually, I can probably lower this down a little bit so you guys can see it better. Go like that and maybe expand it a little bit if I can. That's kind of a pain. Here, we'll just go this way and then down just a little bit. If I can get my mouse to get there. All right, there you go. So now this I'm a little more shaky on because I haven't dove too deeply into this yet, but this is the um, Fanalab software. So with this, you can see what games are currently installed on your system. So you can see I have these games installed and you can go ahead and set up the different profiles for each game into what you want. So you can launch your games directly from here and it'll keep those settings. So that's pretty cool. At least that's the way I, I, I think it's supposed to work anyway. Um, now down here, it shows you each of the devices that you currently have connected and you can go in and change the picture of each one. So if I wanted to change the picture on my wheel and I said, hey, I got the Club Sport wheel for PS4, PS5, so it's going to load that image for me, which is kind of neat. So wheelbase, DD1, of, there's only one image available for that. Um, the V3 wheels, so if you have the different types of CSL Elite or CSL, you know, Elite pedals, the load cell version or the inverted one. So I have just the normal Club Sport V3s, and that's what showed up. And that's it. So that's the three devices I have currently connected. Um, up here, we have no game running right now, so this won't show anything. Uh, again, the links for the forum, Fanalab, the blog shop, all that, YouTube, Facebook, all that stuff, Twitter. Um, so now, from there, across the top, we're on our main view. If we go into our tuning menu, so here again, like what we saw before in the... Um, in the Fanatic control panel, we have all these same options here again. And of course, these are all coincide with all of these settings here. So if we start moving to different setups, this all automatically changes with it. And you can, I don't know if I said this last time, but you can reset also to the factory defaults. And everything else is just like what we saw before. Very cool. Dynamic force feedback, I'm not sure what that is, so I just left it all disabled. I'm not sure what that does, so I'd have to read up more into that and see exactly what what that means. Vibration, now here you can really set things for ABS vibration. So this is part of the uh, steering wheel, the rim itself here. So you can change the different vibrations for the rev limiter vibration, suspension travel vibration. There is a lot here. So I would suggest just go through, start playing with that. And um, like even understeer vibration, oversteer vibration. So it's really cool. It's a lot of stuff in there. Um, brake pedal. So this gives you all the vibration settings for just the brake pedal itself. Uh, the throttle, this gives you all those vibration settings just for the throttle. The LEDs, this one's actually really cool. So telemetry data, so you can have the main, or what they say here is display constantly, the speed or RPM or fuel in liters, the gear that you're on, traction control settings. So there's a few things that you can set to display constantly. Um, other things that maybe you can't, but... Um, 
and then you have different priorities for each one. So it's pretty crazy the amount of stuff that you can do just from this telemetry data list here. Um, and that's on your just that's for the display that's going to be on both items here. Uh, the rev LEDs. So this is in pit lane. This is what it's going to show. The pit limiter is going to show this and the rev LED flash is going to show that. So there you go. Uh, rev LED are PM values or all values. So you can set these any which way you like. I left it at default. Seems to work pretty decent. And uh, you can, of course, change any of these colors. There's a color wheel that shows up. So say you don't like the yellow and you'd rather go with uh, purple. So you can change them individually any which way you want. Or you can make them all the same if you don't like the different colors. Uh, over here on the flag LEDs, so those are the LEDs on either side here. There's three on each side, as it shows here. So wheel spin is going to give you white, uh, wheel lock, and these tell you, again, the pop-ups when you hover, the hovering pop-ups that come up are very informative. So if you don't know what something means, you can go through and um, check them all out. Pit lane, uh, pit limiter, analog brakes. So a lot of these are the same uh, blue, but uh, you can change those again. You can change anything to whatever you want or whatever color palette that they offer. So one, two, three, four, five. So there's eight different colors that you can choose from. And um, yeah, so you have a nice visual representation on, you know, the red flags, nice yellow, blue, green, white. So it's, it's awesome. Very nice. And of course you can turn these on and off as you wish, if you don't want to see that. Now this one is very interesting. So if you keep your attention on here while I'm messing with this, um, you can actually set what comes up on, on this display while you're racing. So this has speed, gear, lap, position, current lap time, and last lap time. Uh, the one that I think might be more useful to me anyway is this one which has speed, uh, gear, so that's right here in the middle, uh, the fuel level, uh, ERS level, DRS zone, whether it's active, and uh, the delta your time delta so that that i think is pretty cool um, other people may like other ones so here's one that has the uh, speed gear all, all sorts of other stuff oil temperatures brake biases um, this one gives you more lap type information your speed and gear obviously last lap time best lap time car ahead and car behind that might be really useful when you're online racing um or I guess any time. <laughs> I don't know. But there's lots and lots and lots of stuff to look at here. So um, it's really very cool. And then analysis screen, you have the default, which is the Fanatic logo. So if you're looking right here, um, the system information screen. So that gives you your, your main firmware uh, hardware version, the time up. So right now we've been up for 54 minutes and 28 seconds. So that's pretty cool. Uh, information about the motor and the uptimes for each one as well, firmware, all sorts of good stuff there. Um, you can have force feedback info also. So force feedback set point. We're not doing anything right now. So motor info just gives you information. The fan speed is at 750 RPMs. Uh, the temperature in the motor is 23 degrees C and the temperature of the driver is 29 degrees C. Um, so yeah. You can see the newton meters of force getting getting done there too. Temperature info just basically gives you a chart with temperature analysis as it goes. So there you go. Pretty cool stuff. Now, if you also want to get to these screens a different way, you can also do that if you press and hold this button on your wheelbase that changes you to your setup. So if you just press and hold it and then move the funky switch left or right, then you can get to all of that same data as well. And you can let go of that button. And if you just want to keep that screen up, you can do that. Or you can switch to this one. Yeah, whichever you want. So yeah, there you go. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, what's next here? Now we got our game profiles. So this one I have the least amount of experience with so I'm not exactly 100% sure how all this really works 
but um, this ITM, oh, that's the ITM. See, I'm learning as I go. So you can have this display. So say I liked, uh, like I was saying that this one here, maybe I like that screen to be up all the time. So in the game profile, when I'm playing a set of Corsa, um, I want to have this ITM also, and the LED and the vibration, all that within the profile. Right now, it's set to the default profile, which has, you know, this information in there. Um, so if I were to change it and say I want to add the ITM in there, then I can do that, I think. Now, I'm not sure what the difference. Oh, I think I would select it and then say load. Maybe. Or is that actually loading the game? I don't know. Oh, that's the active profile. So I just loaded the active profile. So I don't know if I can just select those things then. Yeah, so you're going to have to play with it and see. Um, I, I definitely need to spend more time with this. And I did, you know, <laughs> I'm saying that up front. I'm not an expert in this in this screen at all, but it does look pretty cool. So, um, so I think there's a lot that you can get out of it. And um, yeah, just kind of go from there. So that is that. And then there's a settings screen. So you can choose your language, your units. I'm in the United States, so we're miles per hour, Fahrenheit, uh, different options there. You can minimize to tray on launch, which is what I have it doing. Um, minimize to tray at start, or minimize to tray, minimize to tray at start. Uh, auto start fan lab with Windows, I, I have that on there too. You can change the background if that's something that interests you. So I have different backgrounds here that you can set it to. I'm not sure if that, if you care. Um, but if you did select a different one and then say load and you can see, maybe you can see in the background, not sure if that comes out too good, but it's, yeah, I guess it does. So you can change your background and I'm sure you can get different ones. Like I should get a sim racing revolution background on there. Maybe, maybe I can do that. I don't know. Well, we can try that a different time, but anyway, uh, again, there's more diagnostic log settings, um, all sorts of different things, reset to global defaults. And it shows you where your FanLab directory is located. So if you needed to get in there. And all right, up here is a, there is a new FanLab version available. So what version? I'm on 1.60.2, so there is a new version. So you can just click this to download the new version. I'm not gonna do that right now, but you can. So, um, so I think that covered just about everything um let me try yeah i think that covered just about everything so i'm gonna stop tinkering and uh try to end this video on a high note so uh so i hope that gave you a little bit more information about some of the software that you have available to you i know i'm not an expert on trying to set it all up but um maybe we'll take a look at this in the future and give you some hints, tips, things like that as I start figuring stuff out too. So uh, the wheelbase is awesome. It is very cool. And uh, I think you should all check it out if you have the means, I highly suggest it. So anyway, thank you for watching. Um, we're gonna cut out of this. We're gonna go to our conclusion and uh, wrap this all up today. So uh, we'll be right back. Hi everyone and thanks for watching. So hopefully you got something out of today's video. Uh, know these utilities, there's a lot to go over there and there's a lot that you can explore on your own too outside of this. I mean, I'm just scratching the surface here today. So hopefully you guys dig into it and get as much as you can out of your wheelbase and your rims that you have. So again, thank you for watching. This is John at Sim Racing Revolution. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you know when future episodes or future videos are coming out. Thanks again, take care, keep sim racing. See you next time.